All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk with Carolina David. You already know who I am, Carolina David. We're about to get into Genesis chapter 49. But before we get into it, though, please hit the like, hit the share, hit the subscribe, leave a comment. If you got questions about anything, if you want to talk about anything, leave a comment, go to the description box. Follow me on all my platforms by clicking the link in the description box. Okay, now, let's get into Genesis chapter 49. Yeah, it is now the time of the doubt. We need to repent before we hear this out. The time will come, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that the Lord is Jesus. Yeah, it is now the time of the doubt. We need to repent before we hear this out. The time will come, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that the all right, this is Genesis chapter 49, starting at the first verse. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall fall before you in the last days. Okay, now Israel is called unto his sons to let them know what's going to happen. He's basically probably about to let them know that they're going to basically be placed in the hands of Egypt or, or something of that nature, probably, because the Lord ain't going to just let nobody. He's he going to let you know what's going to happen. Gather yourselves together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen unto Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity. And the excellency of power, unstable as water, you shall not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, and then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. <laughs> All right. Right here, we see that Israel is letting their sons know what's going to happen, and he's starting at Reuben, his firstborn son. He told him, he said, you my excellency, you my might, my power. Like, basically, you the beginning. You you my strength. You the beginning of everything. So you, you, you started me. You started my legacy, in a sense. But then he also said that you went unto my bed and defiled it. Why? Because Israel's wife, uh, uh, I think it was Bilhah, Reuben went in unto her. And had sex with her and got her pregnant. Right there, that's committing fornication. He committed fornication with his father and adultery. Because that's his father's wife. And incest. So, Reuben it was just messed all the way up. And he said, you defiled yourself by doing so. Basically, you basically br brought uh, Envy, you brought vengeance from the Lord upon yourself, in a sense. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi are your brothers, instruments of cruelty in their habitations. O oh, my soul, you come not into their secret, unto their assembly. My honor, you be not united. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath for it was cruel. I will divide in them Jacob and scatter in them Israel. Now, he brought out Simeon and Levi because, you know, they did kill their brothers. Well, I'm mean, sorry. They did kill their sister's basically husband because, um, if y'all don't remember, in the chapter where the king had came unto Jacob because his son had found favor upon Dinah. And they was mad because instead of her being with, you know, like how the custom was, and by him, the, the prince, basically taking her virginity, they felt they was mad about that. So they killed the man, and they killed the whole, when they say he tore down that wall, they killed the whole, all the men of that land. And, and he basically said in Jacob, with, they will be divided 
and scattered them in Israel. So basically saying that they will be separated within within Israel, within his lineage. They will be separated, not together in a sense. Verse 8, Judah, you are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Woo! Do y'all not see how Israel, which is Jacob, prophesying to his sons right now, letting them know what's going to come about, what's going to take place in trespass. But when it came down to Judah, he said, Judah, you are whom your brothers shall praise. Why? Because of Jesus. Jesus come out of the lineage of Judah. And then he also said, your hand shall be at the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Who, what, what did the scripture say? Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So what that mean? Every man is going to bow down before Judah. Every man is going to bow down before Jesus because he come out of the loins of Judah. So he's letting them know what's going to happen in the future. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you are going up. He stooped down. He couched, which I believe it means he crouched as a lion and as an old lion whom shall rouse him up. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Mm. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Mm. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine. His teeth shall be white with milk. Yo, Israel has just now prophesied of everything that was going to come later. Because right here where it says uh, Judah is lion's whelp. Judah is of the lion. That's why they say that Jesus was go, like basically come like a mighty royal lion. <clears throat> and then it says he crouched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. So he said asking who going to beat him up? Who's going to beat Jesus up? Who's going to be better than Jesus? Who's going to be greater than Jesus? Who's going to be stronger than Jesus? Because he said he couched as an old lion, crouched as an old lion, basically like, you know, he's down and whatever like that, ready to pounce on you in a sense. And then, and as an old lion. So basically he was wise as an old lion he, and he was still strong as a young lion. He's speaking of Jesus, y'all. And then it says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Who? Shiloh. Who is Shiloh basically compared to be? Jesus. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto who? Jesus shall the gathering of the people be. Everybody is, is accepted unto Jesus. That's why the word of God says what? No man shall get to the father less by the son. And it says that whosoever shall believe on Jesus shall have everlasting life. Israel is prophesying of Jesus right now. He's telling Judah, this is what's going to come about within your lineage. Verse 13, Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass couching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good and the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. 
Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent. Mm. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that bites the horse's heel so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for your salvation, O Lord. Now he's going through all his sons and he's letting them know right now because right, he says Zebulun basically is going to be a shipman. He's going to be like a fisherman in a sense or whatever like that. He's going to be uh, placed at the at the sea, the haven of the sea for the haven of ships. So he's going to be a ship tender in a sense. And then he said Issachar, he's going to be basically burdened, uh, crouching down between two burdens. And he basically going to be uh, a, a servant unto tribute because of a place that he's at is going to be, you know, basically over him in a sense. And then said, Dan shall judge the people, all the people of Israel. So right there, and it said, when he said that Dan shall be like a serpent and the adder in the path, biting at the heels of, of the horses that the rider could fall back. Dan is basically going to be like a judge. They're going to, he going to, that's what he gonna be, um, r just rendering judgment and and persecuting and bringing down, like you know, getting them in order, ba basically casting um punishments unto them in a sense. He's gonna be that. He's gonna be that adder and and the serpent. He's gonna be pecking them or whatever. And then Joseph, uh, Jacob said, I have been waiting on your salvation, O Lord. Who's O Lord? Jesus. That's what I want y'all to understand right now. When the word of God says Lord, and then when it says the Lord God of Israel, or the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is Jesus. The Lord God of hosts is the most high God, the Father. Verse 19, Gad, a troop shall overcome him. But he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher, his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal danities. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He gives goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough. Whose branches run over the wall. So, it said that Gad, a troop was going to overcome him. Basically, a war is going to be a war between him and you know, his people and another people, but his people going to overcome the one that came in and, and intruded upon him. And then it said that out of Asher, his bread shall be as fat and he shall yield royal danity. So he's basically saying that Asher's lineage is going to be um, yielding like royalty in a sense. Naphtali is a hen hind let loose. He gives good lead. So he's going to be like uh, uh, his lineage is going to be like a prophet and basically helpful to people and whatever like that. And then it said that Joseph, that he is a fruitful bough and that his branches, it, it goes over the wall. So he's saying that um, Joseph is going to be like basically the, 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 the the judge, the person that's going to basically be a venturer, he's going to be, his people's going to be basically spread it about over the wall in different areas or whatever like that. Verse 23, the archers have sorely, sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him, but his bow abode in strength and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the God of your father, who shall help you, and by the Almighty, who shall bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of your father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brothers. 
So now it's basically saying that uh, Joseph is going to be, he, he was going to be hated that um, archers was going to shoot at him in a sense or whatever, but his boat, a, a boat in strength because of God, of, uh, of Jacob. And from there is the shepherd and the stone of Israel. So then he basically let him know that he was going to be blessed mightily in a sense because of he's going to be blessed of the blessings of heaven above, a blessing of uh, from deep that was lies deep under and then blessed of the uh, breast and of the womb. And then he also let him know that the crown was going to be on the head of Joseph because he was separate from his brothers. Verse 27. Benjamin shall raven as the wolf, and in the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is it that their father spake unto them, and blessed them, everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. So at the end he said that Benjamin, basically Benjamin's people, is going to be like the wolf. Basically like overtaking people and you know what I'm saying like uh, uh uh just a warrior in a sense and and it says in the morning shall he shall devour the prey and at night he shall divide the spoil so basically saying that it like there his lineage is going to be like a a a group you know what I'm saying a a, a tribe that's going be strong in a sense. They, they're going to be overtaking people and dividing them amongst each other. So out of all of them, they are all the 12 tribes of Israel and those are the words that Jacob and he blew them according to their blessing. Verse 29, and he charged them and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron the Hittite for a possession of a burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field the purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob, Israel, had made an end of commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet unto his bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. So right here at the end of Genesis chapter 49, we see that Israel is telling his sons giving them charge and saying take me back to the land of my fathers take me back to the burying place basically the burial plot that they had bought and set up for them and he said uh in the land uh, 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 where Heth the Hittite where he bought that field of Ephron the Hittite he said there Abraham and Sarah was buried there Isaac and Rebecca was buried. There he buried his wife Leah. And then he said, also, basically, you're going to bury me there too. And after he made an end of giving them the commandments and telling them everything to do, he put his feet upon his bed and he yielded up the ghost, meaning he, you know, just went ahead and passed away and went to sleep. So, with that being said, we see now that. The blessings was given unto the brothers and given unto the sons of Israel. And now we're going to be going to Genesis chapter 50 at a later date. And we're going to see what's, what's going to happen and what's going to take place. So I'm going to say good night, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you may be watching. I love you all. And I pray that y'all have a blessed and peaceful night rest or have a blessed and peaceful day. Peace. Yeah, it is now the time, what a doubt. We need to repent before we hit this out. It's time,
will come, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that the Lord is Jesus. The end is now, the time winding down. We need to repent before we hear this out. The time will come, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess.